Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Well, today we look at a new psalm, Psalm 115. A little background on this psalm. You might remember we said from Psalm 113 all the way through 118, we have what we call the Hallelujah Psalms, the Hallel Psalms, psalms that were often used by the Jewish people as they celebrated Passover. Uh, reminder Psalms, telling them to give praise to the Lord because God is a God who's taken care of them. And so these were Psalms to especially, we believe, written by an anonymous writer. Uh, of course, there's no title to this Psalm, but written by an anonymous writer, probably after the captivity in Babylon and the remnant had returned to the land and uh, they were rebuilding the nation, rebuilding the temple, rebuilding the city of Jerusalem. And they were surrounded by a bunch of pagan Gentiles. And it's possible that these Gentiles, as they began to watch the Jews come back in the land, they were maybe somewhat upset about them taking over territory that they previously thought was theirs. But uh, the king of uh, Persia had given permission for these Jews to come back and do these things. As you read the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, and uh, you see the story unfold there that has the history behind maybe this psalm. And this psalm was written to, again, encourage the people to lift up their eyes, to know that they have a God in heaven who takes care of them. If they put their trust in Him, if they fear Him, He will meet their needs. <laughs> the pagans around them, the heathen would say, where is your God? Now it's possible they would say that because when they would go into the city of Jerusalem and maybe look at the temple of God there in Jerusalem that was being rebuilt, they wouldn't see any idols. There were no idols there. Uh, remember, pagans made idols to their gods. They had all kind of gods that they made idols to. I go to India often, and there they have the monkey god. And matter of fact, they got a statue of a monkey god that's probably 40 feet high. You can see it from miles away. And uh, everywhere are idols that the people worship and call their gods. And so did these pagans of their day. And when they came to the Jewish people, there was no idols. Uh, basically, when they were in Babylon, and uh, it had cured the uh, nation of Israel of getting idols like the nations around them. And they saw the futility of that kind of a life. And they came back, no idols. The people would say, where is your God? Where are your idols? Where is your God? And so this was an answer, Psalm, to the question that the heathen were asking. But it's also possible that these people were discouraged and they were struggling. Maybe like we've even heard in America, okay, you Christians, where is your God? If he's so great, why did he allow this shooting to take place? Why did all these people have to die? Where is your God? You prayed and look what happened. And that might be what they're saying. I don't know exactly the story behind this exact psalm, but when the people, the pagan, the heathen people say, where is your God? We have an answer, and it's found in this psalm. So let's read this psalm, and at least part of it, as we get ready to study it over the next few days. And so he says in verse 1, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory, because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the Gentiles say, So where is their God? And they answer, But... Our God is in heaven. He does whatever He pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter through their throat. And those who make them are like them, and so is everyone who trusts in them. Well, let's stop there. That's the first eight verses of 15 verses in this psalm. And again, the first thing the psalmist does is say, Oh, Lord, glorify your name. Make your name famous. Oh, Lord, lift up your name amongst these Gentiles, amongst the pagan nations. And Lord, that's what we need to do today is make his name great. Make him known to the people around us. Not unto us, oh, Lord, not unto us, but unto your name give glory. That's what we want in our lives even today. When the people around us say, where is your God? God will show himself strong on his people's behalf. God bless 
and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.